No, no. Here we go. Now we have something on the. Okay. Test, test. Yeah. I got voice, and here's you, Steve. Over here. Yep. Number six. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to TennoCon. So today's pretty exciting because uh, you know we get to sit down and talk about the Warframe comic, which is something I think when uh, when we started at least that was never something that was on our radar. We never we never thought we'd make a comic book out of this out of this game. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting to have these guys with us. I'm going to introduce your uh, your main panelists here. I'm your host Sheldon. Um, with us today we have from uh, Top Cow we have Matt Hawking. Yay, Matt. Um, Oh, yeah. Maybe, you got yeah, slides and everything. Oh yeah, I got slides. That's I got, oh yeah, yeah, wait till you see my slides. They're so. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm really, I'm really talented fantastic. slide. Does this maker. work? Can, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. There we yeah. go. Yep. So I, maybe before, maybe uh, Matt, you can just kind of give us a little uh, understanding of you know, you Top Cow, where you guys are from, just for people who don't really know about you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Top Cow is uh, Mark Silvestri's imprint inside of Image Comics. Image Comics uh, was formed 25 years ago. I've actually been since there since the start. And uh, so 25 years later, I've written six, six, 700 books, and there's some of the more recent ones I've done. Uh, we publish five books a month. Uh, I met these guys, actually, because they did uh, a, a game based on one of our comic books called The Darkness. Yeah. Uh, they did the second Darkness game. That. So um, that's based on one of our books. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've done Witchblade, Darkness, yep. and uh, Aphrodite 9. Yeah. Sorry. I, I love, personally, I'm a huge Think Tank fan, so... Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah I love it. Thank so, you very much. Um, okay, and then also, are there other panelists we have here? I can only find a bio on a Chinese site. Um, <laughs> not much sure. But I found... Oh, sorry, I found one more. I found a better image. <laughs> Is that Rebecca pretend, like, makeup? That, yeah, that was... Yeah. You, that you was have a cosplayer. Cosplay of you. I thought yeah. it was pretty good. This is horrifying. <laughs> So yeah, yep. so this is Steve Sinclair. He's yep. the creative director. Thanks of the for, thanks for coming, email. guys. Thanks for coming to the con. Uh, has everyone got their hands on this comic book yet? That's sitting here. You, you got, got and, and I know I've been signing it, but some people said they haven't had a chance to read it yet. Like, there's really cool reveals in there yeah, and crazy weird enemies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, actually, to start off, I'm gonna just ask a quick trivia question. Okay, so what was the first collaboration between DE and Top Cow? Anybody got an answer? Hand, hand, this is a, here I have a magic card signed by me which gives you a free prime chamber. Who's got an answer? Oh, <laughs> free prime chamber, okay. Who's got it, who's got an answer? You got an answer, what is it? What's that? You, sir, are correct. Which one is it? The Dark Sector comic. So, the, so actually the very first thing. I don't even remember that. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about this. Oh, you're gonna Oh, so, so this is kind of funny. It took me back because I, I was going to say I, I was going to have the intro to be um, to be the darkness. And then I started looking on my desk yeah. and, uh, you know, any of you who have yeah. who have played uh, Warframe enough know that yeah, there's man, kind of a spiritual awesome. uh, sequel in in the dark sector world. So it was pretty cool to find out that that you guys actually worked on that. It, it blew me away. I just oh, yeah, it just hit me all of a sudden. I'm like, wait, that's a Top Cow comic. <laughs> so um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, as Matt was saying, we, we did get to have another collaboration, which was on The Darkness 2, which, uh, you know, for a lot of us, that was the last uh, publisher-based game that we really enjoyed working on. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way I can say that wow, without taking a dick. Yeah. Um, but, we, you know, we had the privilege of working with you guys and kind of yes. looking at your IP and trying to understand it. Um, and it was, it was a really interesting process for us from a development standpoint to try to figure out how to do that, and what I thought was neat is that now it's kind of the other way. So we're giving right. you that, and, and you're trying to figure out our, you know, what our IP is and what we do. So I was wondering maybe you guys could talk a little bit about the collaborative process between the two of you, because I think it was mainly you two that were going back and forth. Yeah. And I wonder if you guys could, if you give us an idea of like kind of how you approached it, Matt, and, and kind of what the conversations looked like. Well, if you remember, it actually started because you emailed me uh, a couple years ago yeah. and said that'd be cool. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so um, I talked to some of the marketing people in California. They, they gave me a bunch of free uh, platinum. And, good, I, good. and so <laughs> I, uh, I, I played the game for a long time Sound and I uh, liked it. And uh, all that free platinum helped out. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, and then I just started uh, looking at the wiki, the Reddit links, and started looking through the game lore, and then uh, going through and reading all the, the quest logs. And, and honestly, you know, one of the things I, I was stunned with, because when I started getting into Warframe, I was actually a little shocked 
at the depth of the universe. I yeah. mean, it is, it is uh, in terms of a sci-fi universe, it really is on par with like a Star Trek and Star Wars in terms of its depth. Nice. You know, I mean, it's got, uh, there's, I was thinking about this because I was talking to someone earlier and I was saying, you know, if I wrote a comic a month for five years, I still think I'd barely scratch the surface. Wow. You know, so there's yeah. just so many characters and it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little, honestly, when you're getting into something like this and when you read the comic, it is very grounded. It's a very set story. It only deals with a few characters. Um, and, and that's kind of on purpose, because when we, the, the initial mission to design the comic was to try to do two things. It was try to, to, to write a comic book and put a comic book out that served you guys, the hardcore fans, that didn't uh, make it seem like uh, something that you didn't like. So we had to make something that you guys liked and thought was cool with Easter eggs. Secondarily, we wanted to give out copies of San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, and, give it, and try to get new people that had never heard of the game or haven't played the game or haven't tried the game to read the comic. Hey, this is a cool story. It looks really cool visually. I'm going to go try this game. So doing that is, is, is sometimes hard because uh, when you have like really hardcore fans and you're trying to service them, sometimes you can kind of get lost in a lot of detailed storytelling. Um, this is a, a big problem in comics. I don't know how many of you picked up like you know X-Men 385 or whatever it is and tried to figure out what the hell's going on. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not easy, you know? So when you're sort of jumping into this giant universe in terms of this stuff, it's, uh, it's a little daunting. So one of the things... Uh, I wanted to, you know, I don't know, are we taking questions at all? Or? Yeah, we will, we'll take questions at the end for sure. I but. mean, one thing I would love to, uh, to, to hear is, is kind of what you'd like to see in the comic. You know, I'm here wandering around. If there's something specifically you'd like to see, if you want to take a screenshot of your character and email it to me and give me 100 bucks, I'll put it in the comic. <laughs> put uh, him in the comic, yeah. You know, I'll give you my PayPal. Um, but, no, I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, no, and that's, uh, and then so we, we sort of, uh, yep. we wrote it. Okay, here's the funny part. We wrote like a take. And then Steve said, no, 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 I'm going to write a take. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve, Steve wrote a take, which actually, part of it was we were just trying to take a stab in the dark. Yep. You know? And yep. then uh, yep. Steve actually wrote something, sent it back to us, and it, which was, we kind of asked for it. And it was very helpful. And uh, just so you know, uh, it, was, it was very appreciated because uh, we really did not know where to go with it. Yep. So. I don't know if well, when I met that. you just over there, I was wondering if it was going to be a punch or a, or a handshake. So <laughs> I was glad to see the handshake instead. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. So like. So well, I think yeah. The, I think the, the reason that we kind of went there was you guys came with so much respect that I my push was kind of like let's be like be more risky with it right. and like push it harder, and that's what you guys did because uh, I think it would be. Um, it'd be a shame if it didn't kind of challenge. We, we're all in the game itself. We're all about challenging things. I mean, we just did uh, Chains of Harrow, which is is a quest about a kid with Asperger's. So we're trying to bring in like real human stuff into our wacky sci-fi universe. And I think that what you did was great and pushing it in that kind of personal human direction. That's that's what I've always been trying to do is to try to. I don't really like that kind of sci-fi where like plants are exploding and no it's like the Stalin statistic about like a million deaths yeah. is just a statistic. So that's what I really loved about how what you guys did with this is it really became very small cast right. even though there's it's such sort of an epic kind of sci-fi. And I think one of the one of the challenging things uh, for a comic book company like us is um, we picked an art team, and I don't know if you had a chance to flip through the comic yet, but it has a, a more painted kind of digital look. That was sort of by design. We looked yeah. at a bunch of different art teams, and yeah. this one looked the most, it seemed the most faithful to kind of what you guys have yeah, done with the comic or, or with the game. It just feels like it pops. Yeah. And uh, this is an Indonesian art studio, uh, yeah. and I've worked with these guys on a number of projects, yeah. and they are absolutely fantastic and I, I was really glad that we were able to lock them down for this um, that was beautiful because they have a, a toy company is mainly okay. what they do they're oh. a toy they're a toy company out of the orient they do a lot of japanese toys cool. um, and uh, so they do all kinds of stuff so they don't do a lot of comics in fact the only comics they've ever done are for us oh, cool. oh that's awesome so. yeah. i remember when we got one of the proofs back uh the only the only thought i had was vor's too handsome oh. like uh, because yeah. cause we, we got like the, all the Grenier and it was like Vor and I was like, oh, he's, he's looking pretty good today. <laughs> and then and the note we sent back was like, uh, can you make Vor a bit homelier, a bit uglier? Because they made him look so cool and beautiful. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and actually, that's one of the, uh, my favorite notes that we got from you up front was uh, when you read this comic, it actually talks, it makes Captain Vor sound, he doesn't sound like a universal, like uh, just a ridiculously chaotic, evil kind of bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he actually has some sort of... Uh, uh, empathy, and he, and he kind of thinks about what he's doing. Um, 
you know, I always love villains who think they're the hero of their own story, you know, and yeah. uh, there's only one truly sort of chaotic evil hero. I, I'm sorry, I'm using my D&D references. Yeah, yeah, I'm showing my... Good. Man, <laughs> we're going to roll some yeah, yeah. 20s tonight. You're, you're, you're talking about right. Bring it out. For sure. You know, yep. I think, that, to me, the Joker is the only character that works that way. Yeah. You know, and the Batman is like, that's... Yep. Every other character I've seen try to do that, it just it just kind of falls flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I always try to, whenever I write villains, I always try to make them seem sympathetic on their from their own point of view. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple, like I would asked a few people around our office, actually, which was interesting for questions. And one of the questions that they had was, one, um, where does this fit in kind of the canon mm. of, of Warframe? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and two was, uh, I think we see here, you know, it says uh, it's number one of a series. It's called Ghouls. So maybe you guys could talk to uh, what the plans are for it as it, as it moves on, essentially. So um, I don't know. That's my, that's my uh, leading question. Can you tell me about... Well, it sounds like Matt wants to just get ideas from the, from the players as well. To get pushed yeah. <laughs> I signed an NDA, so I don't know what I can say about the ghouls. So. Oh, 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 you know what? I'm going to show, I'm going to show ghouls at the end, so you, can, you, yeah. guys can, you guys can talk about it. I think, oh, okay. I think with this group, we can talk. We can, we can do some spoilers. Yeah, Matt has an outline for, for several, like an ongoing series, which I think is, is going to be great. And yeah, I, I'm going to clap for that. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I, I think it, it, it's canon, and obviously because Matt's collaborating with us, then, you know, we're we're using it. Uh, it. What's really interesting about it is we were we had ideas that we couldn't manifest in the game. Yeah. And that and Matt was able to do that, and then we can kind of catch up. Yeah. And uh, the ghouls are an example of that, a really cool example of that. Yeah, I actually wondered. I actually wanted to talk a little bit about this character. I don't think there's ever, I don't think she's ever named. Uh, no. Specifically, so I kind of wanted to get an understanding of you know what your motivations were in a good way because I really think it grounds it but I was curious you know who is this person and and what can you tell us more about her without sorry well my answer to that I'm not sure what what um, what Matt would say but uh, we have a mute hero that has no eyes and so I, my, my thinking was you need uh, someone who can speak uh, because uh, Thus far, Warframes don't talk. Uh, and so th that was kind of, I think, Matt would know this better than I, but sometimes you, you have utility of story. Yeah. And you need a device, and you need to just create a character to represent some perspective. And for me, I think uh, how you guys wrote her is really great. She's kind of questioning what is in the suit, and what you know, is it a suit at all, and why don't you speak? And, and so he's, it's... For me, she's kind of like a mirror of the audience, yep. reacting yeah. to this thing that just doesn't talk and is just a murdering machine. Uh, and then I also thought it was really neat that she couldn't see, uh, yeah. just so that you didn't have a scene with characters with one with eyes and one without. I, for some reason, I just thought that was goofy and cool. So. Yeah, I, it's funny. I found like as a as a person, obviously, who's played tons of Warframe, I, that's you know I know the story of the Warframe. I think all of us in the audience are going to know the story of Warframe. So it's it's cool to have a character. Who like I literally I want to see more. I want to see more of this character, uh, you know, and just kind of understand more what she's about. Yeah, she's in the whole first arc. She is okay. Yeah. That's awesome because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really liked I really liked. The I mean, she... is her name a uh, secret? I mean, it's not. We I just don't think it ever happened. Uh, yeah, that's we... probably an error. <laughs> 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 it sounds like an error. It's a mystery. Uh, okay. Her name, name is Masuki. Yeah. So oh, okay. it's, it's, yep. you know, awesome, they're awesome. the Grenier are sort of looking on the Austrian uh, through some Austrian villages for an artifact, and yep. uh, that's how we introduced this character. One of the things I really liked about what he was saying is. Um, one of the intents we said, I said before, is we were trying to develop and put something out there to where when we give these books away at San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, and we put it up online digitally and give it away for free. I mean, uh, we've done these free video game comics before, and millions of people download them and read them for free. You know, when you sell them, it's much less. But when they're free, it, you know, it's, it works. Um, free to so play. That free character is, is kind of a cipher <laughs> that someone who doesn't know the universe can learn through it because uh, yes. that person asks the questions. I always, that, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty much a, a storytelling writing trope where you create a character that's learning along with the audience because then it doesn't seem as forced and like an info dump. I mean, have you ever read a book or a comic or anything where there's just like a mass wall of dumped information and it just feels like that was an info dump. Yeah. Well, the, the smarter way to do it is to have a character like this where you can sort of trope it out and, and make it a character that's interesting. That's cool. That yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely works. Um, 
I guess you know we did talk a little bit about about the ghouls. Uh, I think. I mean, I'm excited about seeing them in game, uh, mm -hmm. and I did bring. Some, I don't know if I'm stealing from the art panel. I, I love to steal they, from they all actually, the other panels. You're, you're good. <laughs> I'm good. You're, you're in the clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so kind of, kind of get a feel for um, the transition. So I can. I'll kind of do a back and forth here. So, here's kind of and the comic was done much before we got the uh, in-game models done, right? Oh yeah. Like oh, much yeah. before. Way before. Uh, yeah. So it's really cool to have this and be thinking about it, and then for it to, uh, you know, to see what these guys are going to be like. Um, in game, yep. I don't know exactly how they. Maybe you can give a, just a quick overview of how they work, and then we'll talk about it in the story. Yeah, the comic. Well. The comic reveals it all. Uh, the uh, they incubate them in the ground in these kind of uh, these gross cloning sac sacks. So usually they get grown as tube men, uh, but the ghouls uh, they have a more um, horror vibe to them in yeah. their design and therefore in their in their origin as well. So. I think for what, what I was excited about the comic to put this in is, is when players play a game for four years, uh, they want to see new stuff. And I think a big thing we want to do this year is, you know, we've innovated a lot of systems on this side of the gun, on focus and mods and, and adding new systems. But I think going forward uh, with story and, and also with gameplay, we need to start revitalizing the other side of the gun, so to speak, which for me is a complete revamp of the Grenier. Make them scary again, don't mm -hmm. make them jokes anymore. That's what I really loved about the tone of the comic was they really felt scary. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, all right. We've got direction. <laughs> cool. yeah. um, okay, so the other question that I got um, a lot of was just in terms of the, the storyline um, of the ghouls, yes. um, can, can you just can you give us a little taste of maybe what the theme of the arc is? Can you? I mean, this is Tenocon, so it's about spoilers a little bit. I know the first one just came out, but it'd be uh, nice to understand kind of what the feel for the arc might be, or what what are the themes that you're kind of shooting for? I was wondering if you could give us any insight on that. Um, well, I, I think when we first started talking about it, we we wanted to do like a a last man standing kind of thing, and okay. so when this Excalibur Tenno comes in and he's fighting sort of these overwhelming odds, you know, I mean, uh, it's sort of that that idea, a bit of the Kurosawa, like we talked about, and uh, so I, I think the ghouls are sort of this new element that uh, they're unaware of. So when they're brought in, uh, it feels like it's overwhelming odds, and I don't I don't want to give away too much because we haven't even finalized all of it yet. Sure, sure, I mean, the, okay. the, the second issue of this won't be out until I believe November or okay. December, so, so it, it's right. going to be a ways and hasn't been actually been drawn yet. Um, but uh, this is just an intro, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to show it to, to y'all and get kind of some feedback and uh, kind of we'll incorporate that into what we're doing because we still have time to, uh, to make notes and corrections and, and tweak things around. That was, that was part of the, the goal of coming here and showing it to you guys, the hardcores, mm -hmm. and say, uh, hey, is this... Uh, do you hate this? You know, because if you hate it, then we got to change it. You know, because uh, then we're not filling half of the mission. You know, yeah. appeal to new people, make the old people happy. Not that's that awesome. you're that's old. the way we. That's the way we make Warframe. Matt. Yeah. yeah, same way. Same yeah. way. Right on. Right on. That's cool. But I mean, the idea of the ghouls was honestly it was it was a uh, more of a horrific element. I know when we when I first started looking at at uh, at Warframe, I wasn't looking at it with kind of a horror thought really. I was looking at it as more just standard sci-fi thriller. You know, so when you guys added in the idea of the ghouls. Uh, it was kind of scary looking. I, some of the early when we started playing around with it, I said, you know, we can add some horror element to this and make it a little more. Uh, I, I'd never seen that until yeah, you just popped oh, cool. it up. So that's cool. Those are cool. I hadn't seen those. But, I want to uh, get those sunglasses. Like, <laughs> we, those are. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that was, that was a lot of what it was. And uh, there's going to be a, uh, a, a vault in the storyline. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll tell you why, because I play a vault. Oh, there you go. Nice, nice. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> get some bolt mains so, in the house. Nice. A few of you. So, uh, and I think we're going to, there's going to be a lot of Easter eggy stuff. So there'll be a lot of stuff where you as a gamer are going to see it. I mean, uh, you know, there's like special moves. Like it's, we can't, I didn't want to be super cheesy like in the Power Rangers where it's like, <laughs> call out the special move and then you see the guy do it, you know. But you'll see it, you'll see it acted out. There's one of the Excalibur signature moves in, in there, the dash. And uh um, I don't know. If, I don't know if you have that page, but there's, yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, you know. So we're going to include stuff like that. We're not going to call it out in sort of goofy, goofy fashion because right. we're trying to take it a little more seriously. Oh, that's mm. cool. Mm. That's great. Well, as Matt was saying, actually, what we did really want to do was to get feedback from you guys. Um, there's a mic right over there, I think that works. So if you guys want to just, anyone who has questions, uh, just line up over there, and I'll start taking some of those uh, while people are getting lined up. 
Um, I have uh, I have one more. I can't believe I'm using magic card signs with my name, but that, this is as cheesy as I get right now. Um, so I've got one more. I've got one more uh, prime chamber here, or a legendary core. Actually, you can choose. You can choose what this what this is. Okay. Um, but what I need you to do is I need you to tell me um, three books that uh, that Matt has written. Three comic books. Who can who can do it? Who can that we've given you? Give it. I think my wife could win that one in the back. Oh, your, your wife's going to win? Anyone? <laughs> Does Anyone she need a prime a chamber? <laughs> Who wants to take a stab? Okay, Taylor? take a stab. That's true. Okay, yeah. And then you've and got this. you got two. Warframe. Warframe, yeah. <laughs> they showed nine up on the wall. Yeah, I did. <laughs> this is re 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 Regency effect. What? Regency. No, that's Cedric. It's all right. Worry about it. <laughs> any, any, any other takers? I, I, uh, I'll I just keep it for myself. That's cool. It's fine. <laughs> Oh yeah, what you got? Oh, I see the I see I see you using your phone. That's fine. You I, I see cheating. Right I see cheating. The hand right there. Okay. Oh, you got him. There we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's his. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go with your question. Hi. Um. So I love the preview. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. My question is, why is the moon visible? <laughs> that's why a good is question. What? That's that's that might be part of the errata. The moon is visible. Yes, good question. That was it. Thank Matt, you. Matt and I will be talking about that over beer tonight. Yep. We both we both missed that. Yep. That's a double miss. Okay. <laughs> I'm Next, make question, a note of that. If you don't mind. First, I'd like to know. Oh, can you pull the pull the mic up a bit? It's getting in your mouth. Uh, thank thank you. you. I have two questions, if you don't mind. First. And will we learn in these stories how much leeway the Lotus gives to the Warframes? Because in games we go to do stuff like the fishers, uh, some random spying on the ship, and we don't really seem to have a lot of limitation from the Lotus. So will we explore that aspect of the operation of the Lotus in that? Hmm. Will the Lotus be implicated in the, in the stories? Yeah, I, right. I think that's in the outline. I didn't know the, the, uh, the mission giving, like the Lotus as part of the outline to be telling them what to do and all that sort of stuff. That, yeah. I saw that in your, your yeah. next, next outlines. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yep. And my second question is, will we see the interaction between different Warframe? Because as it stands, we have 36 something Warframe and we don't really see in Canon an Excalibur with an Excalibur Prime or a Frost with how will we know how they interact? Is there a hierarchy? Is there a structure? Will we learn more about that in comics or in game? Are you, well, I, I can tell you that uh, in, in the comic, you're going to have the Volt save the Excalibur because I play a Volt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so the, yep. I, I think the answer would be mainly, uh, even, in the, even in some of the web stuff we've done, I think it's always been different. I don't think we've ever had like, the two at the same time. No. No. So yeah, I guess yep. the answer is no. Okay. I, I was Thanks. kidding, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, don't, I, I saw some people go, Arr. <laughs> no. Okay, next no, question. I think that's Thank cool. <laughs> All right. I uh, already asked something similar, um, but you took a very uh, uncommon approach with the comic book, book um, by showing the lives of people that we really don't ever see. We see mostly the larger factions, Grenier, Corpus Infested, even the Corrupted. Uh, we see soldiers around relays, and we even saw some people in the Nidus quest. Um, will we get to see more about these people and who we're protecting as Tenno? That's a good question, yep. What time is it? Yeah, yeah, not quite that time yet. I'll answer that in a few <laughs> hours. Yeah, we'll answer that later. It's a great, it's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, as it stands in the, hands, in the game, I'd say probably the scariest unit that the Grenier have, have would be the Manic. Yeah. Um, and I mean, they also sort of fit in the hit that horror her, her genre. And the most we got to see of where they came from was in the Tube Men of Regor event, yep. which was pretty much about the exact opposite of the ghouls, the better, faster, stronger Grenier. I was wondering if uh, we'd see anything from that and that end. Like, will, is there a chance we'd see, hey, like, Tyler Regor show up and up talking about his experiments or anything hey, regarding hey, the Tube Men or Nerd? Uh, within, the, within the comic series, you mean? Within the comic series. 
Uh, yeah, I think I, that's not currently in, in the outline that, uh, that Matt was working on. Um, just the taste thing for me. Uh, what I'm excited about is for Matt to create more stuff, new characters and new experiences. Obviously, with the respect that he's got for, for what we've done, but uh, for me, I, what I liked about the comics is the forcing function to do new and interesting things like the ghouls um, rather than rehash. But those, those characters are definitely really interesting, and I think, like Vords, you know, it would be cool to see that character kind of come in and reflect on these new circumstances. So I, I think the answer is yes, but maybe not in a focused way. Of course. Yeah, cool. All right, yep. thank you. One of the cool things about a comic is you, you have this thing called narrative, and it's kind of a, I use it mainly as kind of like a, a first person narrative. It's what the person is thinking. And a lot of times, one of my fun things about comics is what they're thinking isn't always what they're saying. And, and you can learn a lot about a character by sort of uh, getting what's going through their mind and what's going out of their mouth. And the difference, the space between that, I've always found to be the most interesting place to tell stories from. Um, and so I think to kind of tailor both those questions together, like the Mitsuki, the girl, we're going to learn a lot about her and uh, kind of how some of these things affect, how they kind of revere the Tenno, and at the same time, they're kind of afraid of some of the stuff that happens involved in all this world, and uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's like any, any time I think when people are involved like in a war, you know, you always talk about the people that are collateral damage, and uh, the, you don't see a lot of that in video games, you know, because people are focused on the gameplay and the action, um, but uh, in stories like this, and a lot of times, I think in a lot, of game, a lot of gaming comics, I've seen that too, where they'll deal with a lot of the peripheral characters and kind of flesh some of that stuff out. Yeah. It kind of a, it, it's a good place to fill in the hole. Like when I did the, uh, we did 50 issues of a Tomb Raider comic back in the 90s, and uh, uh, the idea was to tell stories that weren't part of the game. Yeah. I always hate those straight adaptations. Right. They're like, here's the, here's the story you just played, yeah. you know, or, or the, they make those Star Wars comics that are the exact movie. I'm like, I don't know why anybody buys those. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you anyway. know what's going to happen already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's the point, really? Yeah. Thanks. Nice. Okay, next question. I read the comic, loved the artwork. Um, I was pleased to see that it included Vor, my favorite villain in the game. Cool. Cool. So I wanted to ask, are we going to have any more Vor in the in game itself? Any more Vor lore? More Vor lore? Vor yes. Lore. Oh, sorry. In the in the game proper. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, I think without without being too elaborate. Yes, he's still one of my favorite characters in the game as well. I there's something about this decrepit. General who, who, you know, like Matt said, is uh, feels like he's the hero of of the clone army that he leads, and really respects them, and, and really really cares about him. And yeah, we've teased things about his relationship with the queens, his potentially inappropriate relationship with them. So I think there's a few more stories we need to tell with him. Anything are, planned so far? Nothing, nothing being planned right now. Nothing like only ideas, unfortunately. Oh, one more question. Go ahead. Um, the Warframe, in the, so far in the game, they're treated as tools, right? Yep. But if you look at their idol stance, they have personalities. Yep. Will that be explored at all in game or in the comic? Uh, yeah, I think, I'm hoping both, actually. Um, at the end of Second Dream, there's a one little, there's like a four second thing that happens. And it, it, my hope is that always had put a question mark over the things that you're asking about. Uh, and my, uh, yeah, I don't want to give too much away because we're talking about this stuff later, but yes, I, I, I would like to explore that as well. So they're not just tools. They're not just weapons. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, <laughs> next, next, other panel. I just say one thing, Vor, Vor does take major center stage in the comic book, and one of the things I love about that character is historically any military figure that is demoted almost always quits. That's, there, there's so few historical military figures that have been demoted that stayed and continued to fight the good fight. So uh, it's one of the reasons I love that character. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's, it's very Sansu. Anyways, um, first thing, Top Cow, big fan. Me and my wife own a stupid amount of your comics. Thank you. Yeah, uh, pretty much all the darkness. Anyways, so using the law of logical progression, <clears throat> so there's a, com there's a game, there's a comic, there's an anime coming. <laughs> Will there be a tabletop in the future? Tabletop. Well, it, it kind of sounds like the D&D references. We might have a little uh, yeah. pen and paper collab yeah, that we have to start yeah. working on. Uh, I actually know how to do that and have friends in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pitch. All right. I, I see. I see. All right. Very All right. sly. 
All right, 3.5 like edition. <laughs> uh, yeah, how we approach it, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, it, it's very ad hoc how we approach it. Uh, the beginning of this year, uh, we wanted to try to branch out more, and I think uh, working with Top Cow, I don't know. You've for definitely me, done that. It yeah. feels, it just, it, for me, it feels like such a cool legitimacy of what we've been creating. And as Matt said, like, there's so much to the game. But in many ways, as you guys are well know, we just made it up as we went along. I mean, we had, we had these kind of a couple big secrets that we kind of built everything around. Um, and now we've hired an additional writer to work at the company, Cam Rogers. Uh, and, you know, working with Matt and Ryan on, on this collaboration to try to maybe make sense to these, th to these things, bring some consistency, hide the moon when we're supposed to, stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I wouldn't make any promises about that necessarily. Yeah, we got a vinyl this year too. I mean, I know. Can't wait to have like pogs and. Uh, <laughs> they still make those. <laughs> Glade fidget spinners, right? Can you oh, not like, a fidget spinner. That's a Donda. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, like a Warframe right. like Warhammer game though, with all the miniatures? Oh yeah, that would that'd be, be badass. Cool. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Good question, yeah. but I don't. I don't have a good answer. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. It's funny just thinking about that. Is that yeah? The first time I reached out to you, Matt, was two years ago. Yeah. It took us two years two before years we actually yeah. made this happen. So these things take time, for yeah. sure. Hey, guys. Um, I kind of got two quick questions here. So the first one is, is like Warframe in relation to the war and the story and synergy when you're going about creating expanded war for a game that's very fleshed out. Um, how are you going to, say, put that expanded war back into the game that the comic is based of? So basically, is there going to be a way for us to, for example, look up the information that you're putting in the comic into the game. And the second part, going to the comment in relation to redesigning their Grenier when you're also expanding on the Grenier in the comic, is there going to be a way for you to say, well, if we're going to do a rework aesthetically on the Grenier, is there a way that you can possibly even explain that in relation to war and with the comic? Hmm. Okay, I was going to start with just that's one part question. of that. Yeah, that's yeah. a big question. Sorry, I went a little quick. No, that's, no, that's okay. I was just thinking that the ghouls are a really great example of what you're talking about, right? Where the idea for the ghouls was kind of seeded in the comic. Obviously, the comic had it way before, and then we kind of uh, finally got to flesh it out and then bring it back into the game. So I think that's an example of how closely those things are, are tied. Uh, and, and that's why I guess my earlier question of these guys was, is this lore? Because I think that's what, when you're saying that this is canon and this is a part of the World Warframe universe, then that, that has to be your expectation, I think. Well, there's a lot of cake to Warframe in relation to the lore of content. So yeah. for me, it's almost like, I, one thing that's kind of a concern about that is, I don't want to have to go to the expanded sure. lore to understand what's going on in the game. And by, by example, that would be, and I'm gonna use another game as an example, is Halo 5, where you have to read eight or nine books to figure out what's right. going on in one mission. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a concern yep. where the comic should kind of supplement the content that's in the game and not the other way around where it's all based around it. Like it's, it, that's just kind of a concern, but. Yeah, I, I think it's a valid concern. I think it's just, like I think right now what we've even, what we've demonstrated with this is that we're pretty cognizant of that. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yep, thanks. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's not something Matt and I have really talked about a lot, but I think the other, like, the two sides of that coin are is that, is that you're create, you, the comic should exist for a reason, and so you don't want it to feel, I, I don't want it to feel derivative, I want it to feel additive, and also to be kind of risky, which can then put force back on the game, which is really, what I really like about this is it, is it applies force on the ghouls and the story of that, uh, and also on the civilian characters, which someone was asking about right off the bat. Uh, but you're right, it would be a mistake to say, here's a quest in Warframe, and if you want to understand what the hell's going on, you need to go somewhere else. We do that a lot already in Warframe for the game systems and stuff. You know, like go to Wikia if you want to understand how to farm that stuff. We've been slowly trying to fix those things. Uh, Pablo and the quality of life fixes, bringing in, you know, disclosing drop tables. I mean, there's a lot of information in the game that we want to kind of, uh, that, we, that you guys deserve. Um, but yeah, so it's just a question of keeping, keeping a, a hold of the horse as it's running quickly yeah. from the, the terrible. Good, good analogy, yeah. Yeah, good. thank you. Okay, we've got time for two more questions, guys. Go ahead. Okay. That feeling when you're the short guy and all the taller people took all their questions. Um, other than that, Steve, you said you're going to be taking the time to make the Grenier more scary. Yep. 
infested. Yep. They haven't been scary for a long time. Yep. You brought back that really awesome lighting from Harrow. Yep. Yep. We'll be seeing the infested also get this kind of treatment that we're getting in the comics for the Grenier with the ghouls and everything. Will we yep. see a revamp of the infested getting scarier, getting to be more of a threat? Will it be taking over more plants? We finally could see what the surface of Eris looks like when it's the infested planet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, great questions. Uh, yeah, great questions. Um, the, the quick answer to that is simply uh, when you when you're become so familiar with something, then, uh, then, uh, then the contempt is bred, I think, is, is somehow how the saying goes. And so as much as, so my reaction to the way you view Infested or the way the people view Grenier, um, it gets to a point where I'm not, I'm not cool with it anymore. Like, the Clem jokes are funny, but when it just keeps going and going, then, I'm, then it feels like we're doing something wrong. And the, for me, the comic was like a check to say, this is the f vibe. And I mean, we're gonna be showing you more later in the show, which also speaks to a bit of tone change. And I think by seeing the comic, it kind of shook me back to say, okay, what are the things we can do to kind of m bring back some of that, uh, that fear and mystique into some of these enemies? Uh, and that it really is, it's just hard work of revamping them. And like you say, looking at how we've done lighting uh, in the infested set. So I appreciate you saying that. We, we're on the same page for sure. Thank you. Okay, last question. So, um, you mentioned scary with the Grenier and stuff. Um, what about the Stalker? Because I hear he's very scary too. Will there be a storyline between him and Excalibur or the Tenno? Will he change sides to good or will he still stand bad? And so, will he be in the comic soon? He's the hero of his own story for sure. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think he's going to be in the in the initial arc. Matt's taking notes though. So that there sounds like yeah, a cameo. Yeah. You've done something. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you seen the stalker running around the, the show? Yeah, you visited me yeah. at yeah. the Twitch stream. Yeah. I'd be very careful saying his name out loud. Yeah. And there's also something really interesting that I think you specifically will love uh, that Daryl is showing. He's doing, at, he's doing at 5 o'clock. Doing Darryl's at 5 o'clock. I think you, you should go see that. Just do not miss it. Yeah, don't um, miss that. Yep. Yeah. I think we're going to try to do a lot of Easter egg kind of stuff. So you, you might see something that's Easter eggy, and if you don't know what that means, it's like it's a character or a photograph. Maybe there's a picture or a painting in the background in somebody's house of something. Or uh, that's a bad example, but I'm just saying something like that, where it's an Easter egg call out to something you'll recognize from the game lore that has nothing to do with the actual story that we're doing. Uh, like I said, the, the problem is we we could do a story with 50 characters in it. And, uh, but it would, it would be lost. He, like yeah. he was talking about, you really need to ground it down to one or two or three characters to tell a story. It's why Independence Day sucks so bad, and other sci-fi <laughs> movies with have just one or two characters are really cool, you know? Great, okay, yep, so Big guys, soccer fan too, though. Good okay. question, thank you. Um, so these guys are, go I mean, we'll all be around. So, uh, you know, make sure you, you, if you have ideas for the comic or you want to talk about the comic, Matt's going to be here for the rest of the day. <laughs> yep. uh, so he's, and he's got a pad of paper. So um, I seriously, I was taking notes. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. So yep. I want to thank Matt for coming. Yes. Thank Steve, you, Matt. Thanks thank you so well. much. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the show. Yep. Enjoy the rest of TennoCon, guys. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Chosen Wolfing suits you. Autographs for the next hour over that way. For me and Matt. For all of us. Curious. Yeah, yeah it, made, it, 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 it made me laugh. Oh yeah, remember when we saw that glaive and we were just like, what the hell is that? <laughs> It is time, Tenno.
I'm ready. Let's do this. Something's happening, Tenno.